All right. Well, we've got a number of people here. Thanks for every, to everyone for joining today. I'm here with Jillian Gillis, and she's going to give us a presentation on how we can make our homes feel like sanctuaries. Um, we're spending so much more time in the home, and I think what's really interesting is or useful is that you know the things you're going to talk to us about today are things that post pandemic we can still enjoy. I think it's always nice to have a home that feels like a sanctuary in the middle of a busy city, especially if you don't have a cottage to retreat to. So why don't we get started? Okay, so thank you, Megan. Um, so thank you to you all for attending. Um, I can't see anybody's faces, so it's, it's but um, I'm just going to say hello. We've um, got some familiar names here, so <laughs> it's, it's a good one. I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, so today's webinar, I just want to give you like a little bit of an outline for where um, we'll be going with this. Um, so really what I wanted to talk to you today was really about how to, how to make your home feel like an oasis, how to make it feel like a sanctuary to you. Um, I'm going to show you some before and after images of some projects because I think we we all love seeing before and after shots. Um, I'm also going to finish with what I think my sort of top five ingredients are for creating um, an oasis. But what I want to start with is a little bit of an overview into um, my firm, what we do, um, and then also really what our process is, because I, I truly believe unless you have the steps planned out, even if you start with the intention of creating a sanctuary, it can very, very quickly, the wheels can fall off the bus um, if you don't actually have an end goal in mind. So I'm going to talk you through the process in our firm um, and then that will then lead nicely into our before and after images and then what our, what our ingredients are for doing that. So there should be lots of um, juicy takeaways for you at the end. Amazing. Thank you. And I'll just interject for a second. I'm sorry. If anyone nope. has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box and we'll, we'll get to them. Yes. Questions are gratefully received. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to um, myself, um, our firm. Um, so I am... Um, potentially here from my accent. Um, I'm originally from Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I have called Toronto home for the past 19 years. Um, I came here for the love of a good Canadian and <laughs> I'm very, very happy, happy to be here. Um, I, my firm is located in the side, um, just not, not too far away actually from um, the, the Heaps Estrin um, head office on Bayview. And we have, I'd say I have a sort of intimately sized company. Currently we are a team of seven. And I like to say that we, we create immersive spaces for our clients. Um, we are storytellers. Our job is to tell their story. Um, and we, we learn a lot about our clients through the process um, of working with them. Um, there is a lot of, there's a lot of trust involved in, in what we do. Um, and that's something that we, we never ever take for granted. Um, we work on sort of whole homes, say from the ground up, new construction, renovations. Um, a lot of our clients are maybe in transition from um, a previous, previous lifestyle to, to something new. Um, but I'd say all our homes are sort of grounded and all our projects are sort of grounded in what I think is sort of my unique design sensibility. Um, and that's sort of a, a real blend of, I would say that sort of eclectic British style where you can't quite put your finger on where things came from. Um, but it's also very much grounded in my love for symmetry and Georgian architecture, which um, Edinburgh is, is founded on. Um, I like that sense of European flair, but there's always what I refer to is a happy dose of magic is always thrown into all our projects. And that happy dose of magic can just be that unexpected 
fixture or fabric or just something that then just then, then just pops up when we're when we're creating um, and it can be something like in the images I have on the slide here this is actually our, um, our studio which looks very beautiful in the pictures and um, it is it is a beautiful space it's not always this tidy um, but that's where I ended up you know with a swing at the end of our presentation table because I had gone to Sao Paulo and Brazil for design week and ended up finding this phenomenal swing and phoned my builder <laughs> from Brazil and said can we mount a swing from an 18 foot high ceiling in the showroom and lo and behold they made it happen so now I have my swing so that is my sort of happy dose of magic in my space. Um, and look at that bookshelf. Yes. Oh, That's spectacular. Beautifully curated. At, yeah. <laughs> at the time, at the time, yes, it's um, it still actually looks looks quite good. But we do we we use our books a lot. Um, getting that um, that angled shelf was a complete engineering feat. That was. Is it marble? I, I it is marble. Yes, wow. and the marble um, I selected turned out to be quite delicate for for trying to get on such an angle. So it was. It was a whole, it was a whole thing, but it, um, wow. it magically, it magically happened. Worth the um, effort, it's magical. Yeah, no, it is, it is a, it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful space for sure. Amazing. Um, so that's a little bit about, about me. Um, and then I thought I'd share this with you. So this is, I would say this is a game plan for anybody who is thinking of starting whether it's a renovation, whether it's a decorating project. And I, I call this, you know, this takes you from melting pot to finishing line. So when you are initially thinking of, I need to redo my, my bathroom, know where you want to get to is the most critical thing. And so I like to show this to our clients. Um, I would say our process here um, yes, we're all creatives, but that creativity is very much grounded. So we know we have, at the start of our, our projects, we have this sort of little bit of a, a go around, and that's where we're doing all our research, and we're obtaining information from our clients, from the contractors, there's an architect, all of that stuff is all coming into us at this early phase of the project. And that's what I call our, our melting pot. So that's where we take everybody's ideas. And then the door is sort of, is closed. And from there, we then go into our design development phase and taking all those initial ideas and thoughts and then come out with, okay, this is the design concept for either this home or this space. And then upon client approval, that then allows us to go and source everything that is in alignment with the agreed design and gets us on really on a straight path to installation and project completion. If we don't do this, what can happen is you can think you're going along fine but the alternative is you get to the end and you're in a bit of a bit of a hot mess because you just have things have not been thought of or you get to the end and you're suddenly like oh I can't believe I've I've done this and we're still tripping over everybody's shoes at the front door um and I think that's when you can realize that you maybe haven't been cared for during during the process um so we want to get as much contact from our clients as, as possible um, at, this, at this early stage so that we can talk about, you know, simple things like the flow. I, I always talk about the flow of people and their stuff through, through the house because you go into any family home and there's shoes, there's bags, there's sport bags, there's everything. And it's just, okay, I, I'm doing, investing all this money in our home and this renovation. At the end of this, I do not want to be tripping over this stuff. And it can sometimes be something as simple as that, that, you know, okay, this is, this is the goal. Like in addition to providing beautiful kitchen, bathrooms, what have you, 
we're, we're also dealing with the realities of, of life and family life. Um, and I say we're known at GGI for our trays whenever we have made our, our final design selections. We always produce a tray. Um, this is for our client's um, principal bathroom. And again, that just sets the design direction for us. Everything is sort of bolted down at this point. And then if there's any additions to the scope as, as we move on, um, we have, a, we have this snapshot to know, okay, but are we, are we still keeping true to, to where we started? Um, so that's just a little bit about that. Um, and then before I go into our before and after shots, I just sort of wanted to talk about what an oasis or a sanctuary means, means to us um, at GGI, which is representative of what our clients come to us for. Um, we are very fortunate in that 95% of our clients are repeat or, or referral. Um, we tend to find once we work with a client, they are a client for life. And I think it's because we really take, we take the time to really learn about them and what is really going to ultimately feed their soul. Um, and I would say an oasis to me is it's it's less about the stuff which sounds not intuitive at all because we're here to we're here to source and select and design but at the heart of everything what well, ultimately what people want is they want to live a frictionless life like they want to live in a home with ease and freedom and if we start with that as our template for all our projects and, and sort of ask our clients, okay, what do you want your home to provide for you? So instead of us filling it with things, it's like, but what is, what, what is the intention of your home? What is your home going to give you, give you back? And for most people, it's okay, I want, I want, my, I want, I want more time. And that, that can be something as simple as just, being able to find <laughs> find your clothes easily in the morning, you know, um, not be rummaging in a closet that's not well lit, so you, you can't you can't find things. It can be having your kitchen laid out in a way that you are not the only person in your home who knows where things are or where things go, and um, so you're not constantly getting that question of, you know where's this or where's that? It, because it's, it's, it's easy. And so those things um, I think are, are really, really important. We talk a lot to our clients also about sort of con conscious um, consumption. And what I mean by this is not just filling a space for filling's sake. Um, those sort of purchases are going to end up in landfill and you're generally going to regret them. So what you want to do is really be mindful. And again, this comes back to about, okay, what is, what is the intent of, of doing this? What do, I, what, do I want, what do I want back in my life? Um, and I would say one way to avoid mistakes is to really be careful when it comes to following trends. And I know a lot of times I'll get asked, you know, what's, what's on trend? For me, trends are like a t-shirt. It's something you wear, you wash frequently, you know what it's going to get, get, get replaced. A trend is not something that you want to invest in in your kitchen or in your, or, or, or in your bathrooms. You can do it in your bed linens and bath linens, but I feel that um, there can be nothing worse than, I mean, we can work on homes sometimes for like three years before my clients will actually move in. And if we haven't been very careful up front, and if we pick things that are potentially too trendy, they can be moving into something that's already dated. So Jillian, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How do we know what's a trend and what's more timeless? How do we yeah. decipher those, it, those decisions? It is tricky <laughs> because, at some point, 
I mean, you think of stainless steel fridge. At some point, that was a trend. But it was a trend that then had lasting power and is now basically a classic fixture in a kitchen. It is, it takes a lot of, of, of time and also just understanding of, um, I think seeing things in repeat and being immersed in the industry, we now have a really good eye for spotting things that I can see. And I, I know when something's a trend, when it very quickly moves from being high end to low end, almost in, almost in, in the spell of sort of like, like three or four months. So if I, if I've seen something at a show, um, you know, say it's a, it's a light fixture and I think, oh, well, that, that's quite nice. But if I can see that, if I can see something like that, that has been diluted down so much and um, that it is now available at an incredibly low price point, my clients are not going to want to invest the, the money in, in the original. So it's, it's, it is very, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing. Um, yeah. Color too. And I, I think what we try and do and what you'll see in the net, in the, in some of the pictures that are coming up is really, that's where having a bit of an eclectic style really helps where we try to blend in all our projects, items that are, that are, we mix custom with vintage, with to the trade, with high street. And can we look back at previous trends or time periods to kind of check ourselves in terms of, is this a trend of the moment? When I think of an arch, I love an arched entryway, but then yes. I think to myself, would I do it? Will I like it in a few years? But when I look back at history, that's a very classic, classic. moment uh -huh. yes. at home. Is that a way to kind of fact check your yes. solution? Uh -huh. And also if it's something that you love, as opposed to following the crowd, if yeah. it's something that really speaks to you, then that is the most important, important thing. Um, we try to, um, because it, it can be very overwhelming. You're, you're looking at magazines, Pinterest, Instagram, getting lots of things flashed up in front of you. So what we, we try and ensure with our clients is we, we just have that blend. And generally, if we're buying things from the high street, those are going to be more trendy. And that we don't want any more than 10% of that in any of our projects. Um, right. So there is a space for it. There is a space. There's for definitely it. a space for it. You right. don't want to walk into, you don't want to live in something that feels or looks like a museum or looks like, well, why, does, why did I hire a designer in the first place? Like I, I want something that is, that is, that is fashionable, that is, that is tasteful, but tasteful doesn't have to mean trendy. Right. So we might use it in something a little bit more, less permanent. So a pillow yes. in a really yeah. strong, Color. Paint. I mean, paint. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, that, yeah. But I, but I wouldn't potentially, um, you know, do my, do my bathroom in a color that um, was maybe very, very trendy at the time. Because what you will notice then in the next sort of five years is that everybody has that color. Of yes bathroom and then it's um it's a little, little hard and um, what about grass that's a huge one that's been oh i love years now yes and you see I, it a lot you do see it a lot i with metals we always mix okay. so we will never have just one finish in a home okay. and i think that is the best way i mean i think a lot of people were appalled when brass came back because we all had um, memories of 80s brass yeah. and it being very cheap and very yellow looking. Um, now we're more into beautiful and antique brass, sometimes with, with, with a patina, but I like to mix that with bronze, with black, with polished nickel. 
so that in a home you have you have multiple finishes throughout right. so it doesn't allow you to pinpoint it and go brass was in 2020 so yeah. this this was when, when this house was done right you you can you spot those homes that it's so clear when they were done but I uh -huh. think from and that's what you don't that's, that's what, what I that. do not want to leave my clients with that is yeah I smart smart doing them a disservice right um, so what I want to do now is show you just some before and afters um of homes that we consider where spaces or rooms are feel like an oasis or a sanctuary. So the picture on the left here is, is black and white. That was the room before we started. Um, and then the two color images are the room that we finished. So this was created for my client's daughter. Um, she just finished school and was starting out working. And we're in a global pandemic. <laughs> so she needs, she's working from home. Um, like the majority of us were. Um, and so she needed a desk in, in her room. In her room was, it was a little bit complicated because there wasn't um, the wall that is not shown. It has the entrance door and it also has closets on it. Um, so the, the free space of the be and the best space we had for her desk was actually this, this nook in the window. Um, and so we created this, hinge desk um you can raise or lower it if, you know if you need access for cleaning the window but this room is on a third floor um so it just creates the most beautiful vignette and also she has great views out of her out of her window um and we paired this with this really um romantic clouds wallpaper in this in this lovely natural um, color um which my wallpaper I, I have a incredible wallpaper installer um so when i i showed him the room and showed him the paper and said can you do it <laughs> he just sort of said yep for you i can do it so um yeah, because he took, as you can see on the on the image on the far right, he took the wallpaper right into the window recesses, so trying to get all of that matched and everything. Yeah, um, that would not be easy. How do you know where where to start and where to stop with that? Was it a no brainer to go inside that? Yes, kind of absolutely. Thing? Yeah, because I, when you look at the picture on on the right, I wouldn't have wanted to see the recess painted. I think it's just the most natural continuation. Um, what we did in this room, um, and I'll talk about color um, at the end, but you'll notice in here, like the ceiling isn't white, the, the baseboard, the trim isn't white. And that I would say is something that we do in all our projects, that like we, we rarely, rarely um, use white trim. Um, I like the I like the color. I feel especially on this third floor where it's it's very airy um, and it almost has that sort of grounding grounding effect. Um, and so we like that. And you can see in, in her room she's got touches of brass, there's also black metal, um, there's a couple of different wood finishes. Um, and so the whole place just feels very very organic, um, very calm. the bed linen's linen, so it's rumpled to begin with, so you, you don't have to worry about it always looking perfect. Um, and I love how sophisticated it is. It feels mm. timeless, that it's not a room that somebody would grow out of. No, no, it's just, it's really, really, it's local. Um, yeah, I, was, I was sad to leave it. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> we get that with our clients too. You're so happy for them when their house is sold, but then you're you're like, oh, I don't get to see you every day. I know. <laughs> I don't, get to see yeah. this, don't get to see this room anymore. Yeah. Um, next one is is my kitchen. Wow. Uh, now this has been featured in talking about before and after story. Um, this has been featured in in house and home as their as their kitchen of the their kitchen of the month. Um, Dang. So the, the second picture in from the left um, was our kitchen when we, when, we bought, when we bought our home. And um, that was the size of the kitchen. Um, it suited me fine. I am not a cook, but um, my husband has five sisters. So he's a big family. So for the, 
for the short term, I was kind of happy that I didn't have the pressure of cooking or, or entertaining. But as time went on, um, we thought, I mean, we, we, it's funny, we have a huge dining room and then this, and then this, this tiny kitchen. Um, but so what we did was a few years ago, um, we did a very small addition onto the back of our house, literally 50 square feet, um, which doubled the size of our kitchen. So in the after shots, the stove is actually in the same place as it is in the before shot. That is the only thing that is remaining. Um, this has just given us, it allows us both to be in the kitchen at the same time, which is good and bad. Let's face, let's face it. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's nice to be able to only have one person in the kitchen. and then, But anyhow, um, so it allows us both to be in the kitchen at the same time. And it also allowed us to open up the space to our, um, to where we, where we normally sit and eat. Well, I can see you're mixing the in the home. there. Julia, yeah. I can hear exactly what you're saying. I can see the black and the light fixture, the stainless steel stove. I see some brass. Yeah. It's yeah. Cool. yeah, it's stunning. And I can't help but ask, I think some people would wonder, how long would something like this transformation take? It looks like a very original kitchen that you had before. And yes. it looks, it's breathtaking. And it looks like a complete gut of that kitchen. It, well, it was a complete gut. And then what you don't see is the rest of the main floor, which of course, so we replaced all the floors on, on the main floor. Um, but a whole pile of decorating as well. But from start, from construction start to construction finish, this was a this this was a four month project. Four months, okay. Yeah, four months on site with the design work done in advance. So when we're starting on site, we have all our selections made. We have everything purchased so that there there are no delays on site. Um, right. That is the most critical thing because I think we're always especially in a renovation we're, we're always very focused on when are we starting when are we starting and I know as soon as we start <laughs> first things clients are saying is when, is it when, when will this be over and so in order to make the start to the over um, the shortest period possible um, we do everything we can up front and even down to selecting the great color you name it so that when the trades start on site, they have all the specifications and everybody can then just hit the road running. Um, so a lot easier. And are you finding everything is just taking a little bit longer these days? Was this kitchen done pre-pandemic? Yes, it, it is. It is um, the impact, and we were talking about this before we started the webinar, you know, we, like real estate has just boomed this year. And then, yeah. so then the knock on effect of that on all the associated um, industries around it. And certainly I know for myself, I think in the month of March, our clients had something like 23 real estate transactions just from our clients in the month of March. Wow. Yeah, so, this is the busiest market I've were, been in real estate for 10 years. And this is by uh -huh. far the busiest market yes. I've ever seen. And that's just, that's just us. So you then think, okay, well then that everybody's wanting to do to do work. So it's it has definitely stretched things. Um, product is moving, but where I would normally have been able to say this will be eight to ten weeks, I'm now sort of looking at this is going to be sixteen weeks, sixteen to eighteen weeks. So. Our, our lead times have definitely, definitely stretched just because of the, the capacity and also our, like our work rooms and, you know, they have been having to work with less people in to maintain social distancing. Um, so they have got probably triple the orders they're used to having with maybe 25 to 30% less staff producing. So it just stretches out um, and it really trickles out i find everything is. has such a wide effect it, uh, to just to like silly things like there was a was it back in march there was that big um snowstorm in texas um that yes. they had that massive power cut and what i learned subsequently to that 
if the majority of the foam we use for upholstery is produced in Texas, there's two massive plants there. And of course they were really badly affected with the power cut. And when I first heard this, I thought, okay, so they were, they were offline for a week, like, you know, whatever. But then I, then I learned that no, they weren't just offline for a week. What happened was the, um, the liquid that is used to make the foam, it, it froze wow. in the machinery. And so it wasn't just a case of them being offline for a week. It was a case of, you know, then and all the machinery is like destroyed and <laughs> needing to be replaced. So at, at one point we were just like, okay, where is, where is the, the plague of locusts? You know, like what, what else? So it has just been, there's just random things like that as well, just, just thrown into the mix where you yeah. just like, okay. There's well, it really makes you appreciate how mm. much and how many people and, you know, avenues go into one product that we see oh. on a shelf or in a house the amount of yes. people um that were involved to make that come mm -hmm. together and the amount of systems and industries that mm -hmm. come together to, to give us any given product yes uh -huh. and the amount of hands it has to touch um it is it is it is incredible so, yes <laughs> it's been yes i'm surprised we're all still standing but, yes <laughs> we are so yes um this one, uh, this one I wanted to share with you, this is, um, this is a project that's actually, we're currently under construction, um, the tiles are just going up. Um, oh, so that's a rendering, the second photo is... This is a rendering, oh, this is what I wanted to show you, so again, talking about process and being able to give our clients a clear, a clear vision, um, so that they have trust in our process um, the image on the left is um, my clients purchased a beautiful new home outside of the city um, and we had previously done the principal bathroom and I knew as soon as I I saw this that this bathroom was, was not going to, was not going to last so um, and my client is not a bath girl um, the only thing we, we disagree on, I have no understanding, is somebody could not be a bath girl, but she's not a bath girl. So we, I knew the bath was not going to stay, but then, and she also has a very small, the opening here leads you to the water closet, and then there was a small shower, and then a very large vanity. So it was a tricky space with the bay, with the bay window. So when we were on site, when I, I was first got through with her, I said, you know, you're your vanity could go in front of this window. And I said, we'll, you know, we'll move the toilet to where the shower currently is. We can give you a makeup area, beautiful vanity. And I know we can make all this happen. Um, my client's partner has got very green fingers and um, the most amazing orchids and houseplants that you can name. And so we designed this vanity specifically for them that that has this window well where plants or orchids can go the mirrors are on are on slides so that they can pull over in front of the window or if you don't want they're not overlooked at all so they have an abundance of privacy um but these renderings are what we are now doing for our clients so you can actually see what your space can look like and understand the finishes and, and, and the finish level. Um, we do a lot with LED lighting. Um, this just gives a really soft, easy glow on, on the floor. Um, it's great as a nightlight. It <laughs> makes a very clear pathway. Um, and so, yeah, so this was just to show you how we can take an initial concept and then turning it into a rendering. Um, right. This is currently how this is how the space looked post post renovation. So this is this is the raw true nature of it. Um, and then this is just an example of our drawing package um, that we do in house that that details everything so that um, when the trades are first of all um, coding for the project, we can get accurate budgeting and pricing for our clients. Um, but then also these, these, these drawings are then used for fabrication um, and, and, and used on site. 
so that it really minimizes really, I mean, we barely hear from our trades on site because they have all the information to hand. Amazing. And it is, you know, we're, we're sort of phoning them going, hey, how are you? <laughs> How's it going? Um, because we haven't been making as many site visits um, just because of the pandemic. We've been sort of trying to keep out of everybody's way. Um, so it's one thing I'm looking forward to. So we've been doing lots of getting sent lots of lots of photographs so that we can see things. Um, but I love that transformation and I love that, you know, where that tub was and when you enter yeah. a room, uh -huh. anything can be anything. Anything know? can be anything. It really, it really is. And it's just, it's having the, now I say anything can be anything. Toilets are the one thing that I always say to clients, like moving a toilet is never fun. We were lucky in this project, um, as you can see from the drawings under construction, that the floor joists run in the right direction for us. Yeah. So it's very easy when we're, we're moving the toilet from where that small window is to, to, to the opposite wall. So this, we had two versions of these, of these drawings. Um, one was we can move the toilet the other one was it's going to be a bit of a nightmare so we can we can go in this direction but we knew very early on that this that this was doable but it 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 really is i mean obviously if you're doing a whole home renovation then um really the world's your oyster um i do always say to clients to start from the top down and um, we we're currently working on a, on a project for clients and I, I know the first room they want to tackle is their kitchen, but they also have three bathrooms on the second floor that, that need to be done. And so what we're doing is we're designing all those spaces at the same time because I, I know that there's going to be plumbing needing moved in their principal bathroom, which is directly above their kitchen. And... I want to ensure that when we do their kitchen, we can also then do our rough-ins for their bathroom and ensure that um, if we need to have any ducting, that we can conceal that in the kitchen whilst, whilst we're building the kitchen. And then we can do their principal bathroom with ease without then either being constricted or, or, or having to then cut open a hole in a, in a brand, new, brand new ceiling. So it is good if you can to start from the top down or at least have, your, have everything planned out. And then if, if you are doing things layer, layer by layer um, so that you're not then compromised further, further down the road. Um, and do you find, Jillian, that there's often a few answers for any given space? Or do you find that there's really one answer here? There's one kind of best solution to most spaces? Or is there more flexibility that there's not necessarily one right answer? There might be three and it's up to the client to pick what they like best. We generally, I always think our, 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 our job is to, is to edit for our clients. So our job is not to overcomplicate their lives by coming back with, you could have this or this or this or this. Um, our job is really, is really to streamline for them. And so there is normally one, one layer. Like I, as soon as I saw this bathroom, I could, I could see it finished. Um, we did provide other options, but nothing was as magical is what, is what okay. this would be. It was um, clear that the vanity should go in the bay. Yes, it had to go there in order to, to also yeah. give them a great shower on the other wall. It was like, okay, we can, there's only so many things. Now, if you're decorating a space, say for doing, you know, a family room or, or a living room, then those tend to be the spaces where we'll potentially go back with a couple of options because you have more, more flexibility. Than a bathroom. Got it. Than a bathroom or, or a kitchen. You know? Got it. Um, although sometimes we'll have, you know, we're working on a gorgeous kitchen at the moment. And I think we have, we'll sometimes draw things up in house. So we might have four or five versions of something to, to try it out. And then the client will get presented with two. So I, I don't waste anybody's time by showing them something that, we don't, <laughs> we don't like, but sometimes we have to, we have to try it 
to then go, no, this, this one's far better. And so that's, that's sort of how we, how Got we it. Um, and then finally, in terms of before and afters, I have this one. Now this is a, well, this house has been featured. It's been in house and home. It's been in. It looks very familiar. Yeah, it's been in El, De yeah, El Decor, know. it's been in Architectural Digest, wow. it's been in a lot of this house, has been everywhere. Um, it's a very compact, historic townhome. Um, this Can you one, tell us where it is, broadly, in the city? Yes, it's on, um, it's in Ancroft Place. Okay, in Rosedale. Um, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, and it's... It's a lot like from the outside, it looks, it feels very British. It's a yes. you know, brick town home, black door. Yes. Um, and a lot of the original moldings um, are here. So you know, the staircase is original, beautiful plaster moldings, lovely big baseboards. Um, when we renovated the space for my clients, um, we did a lot of work, but truthfully, the kitchen layout, there wasn't, the appliances were great really good quality. The kitchen layout, we really couldn't change. Um, so what we decided to do here was to refinish the millwork. Um, we changed out all the flooring throughout, and then we also switched out the lighting. So what would have traditionally been a kitchen come sort of dining room, my clients, uh, my clients wanted more of a sort of comfortable den adjacent to their kitchen. Um, so that is what we provided for them. Um, and we just brought in a lot of color. I think even you know, even in a small space, to not to be afraid of using saturated colors. Um, this lovely sort of warm tobacco leather was something I had I had sort of wanted for this <laughs> for the space for months. And um, this, this did take a little a little time um, to get <laughs> to get that one in. But um, it's just it's so it's, it's beautiful in the space. And when you say time, does that mean working on the client to bring them around? Yes, uh -huh, yeah. Because yeah. uh -huh. sometimes things just do need to sit with people. Yeah. You know? um, we knew the colouring for the kitchen and we did millwork and the wallpaper and the tiles, all of that just fell into place, the lighting. Um, and again, here's a good example of in the den, I have got wall sconces that are brass. I've got a black wall sconce and then over the breakfast bar I've got black and brass yeah. lighting there's a stainless steel faucet you know it all just goes it yeah. just all blends together and um, exactly. yeah so that was how that. are we doing in terms of timing I, I have more questions to ask but I don't want to bombard the presentation I think if I can go on to the top five we Let's should we should probably do that and then we Great. can but I'm, I'm loving I'm loving all your questions okay good so in terms of takeaways, these are sort of what we hold dear in the studio. So the first one is to plan with the destination known. And this comes back to just sort of understanding what your style is. Now this can be if you're working alone, if you're going to hire a design professional, it is good to do a little bit of legwork up front. And you can use Pinterest, you can use Instagram. What I would say is to, to get the, all your images from whatever platforms you're using, get them all into the one place. So we use, we use Dropbox, we generally have a folder for each client project, it's called Inspiration Images, and we, we put everything in there. Our clients then share with us also their found inspiration images. And we're a little bossy on this, so what we, what we do is we, we gladly accept them, but we ask if they can be curated down so that we have no more than five images per room, and then no more than five images for the overall look and feel of the home. Because what I will find is we can sometimes end up with a hundred pictures of a, of a kitchen and they're, they're all the same. So it, it's good for to do that editing work before you share them. And then you, you actually get a real sense of what it is you're, you're looking for. Um, and it, it makes things clear. And one thing that's also critical is to really 
look at the pictures and think, why am I drawn to this? And I would say half of the time, <laughs> people are drawn to the view that's outside the window. Good point. I always love Architectural Digest images. Now I'm like, oh, we're on a 50-acre estate. Yes, exactly. Now, we're pretty magic here, but I can only do so much. Yes. So that is a big thing. And then when you say the clients of sun sometimes go, oh, oh. Well, I don't, I don't actually like what's, I don't like what's in the room. And it's like, okay. So before we go off thinking, okay, they like this look and feel, we, we ask a lot of questions to figure out, do you like the look of the ocean outside the window? Um, or is it, is it that color blue that's inspiring you? Like it, it can be anything. And think outside the box. Don't think just of interiors. Think of... Um, it can be fashion, it can be pottery, it can be, it can be scenery, like just what feeds your soul. Um, you know, anything, anything goes. So I would say this is, this is, this is a really critical thing. Um, so that again, when you then, if you're, if you're sourcing a loan, then you know, whatever you're looking for is going to work with the design direction that, that you've set. Um, Second thing we like to do is to engage all your senses. So smell, touch, sight, and sight. Um, every time we do a kitchen, the first thing somebody will say to me is, I need a kitchen fan so I can cook fish 12 months of, about 12 months of, of the year in the house. <laughs> so smell can be being able to remove bad smells as well as having nice smells. So things like, okay, I read a really good, I read a really good kitchen window. I want windows that I can open with ease because in the spring and fall, I love to have my windows open. Smell can also mean I'm a huge fan um, of essential oils. I know you had Emily and Christine on last month. Yes. Um, and I'm a huge advocate for the, for the doTERRA oils. So we have, I mean, we have three um, diffusers going in our studio every day. So much so, like when we first opened, I think it was the UPS man, he just sort of came in and he was like, is this a spa? You know, because he just loved the spa so much. So um, I think smell is such an important thing, being able to remove bad smell, but they're also being able to add lovely smells. Um, touch, having, spaces that are inviting fabrics and materials that that invite you in having that 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 nice texture um sight having things that you like to see or being able to block out things that you that you don't so if, if your neighbor's driveway is right on right adjacent to your house um and so in your basement, if your windows just look out onto somebody else's garbage bins, then put sandblasted glass on your basement windows. You know, let the light come in, but without the view. Um, sight can also mean having things that are important to you within your sight line. So the image on the right is, is from my kitchen, and this has a Martha Sturdy sculpture in it. And I have lusted after her sculptures for years and um and i'm finally ready to make the purchase um i thought i want to see this every day i don't want it in a good room i don't want it in my living room or my dining room it's in my kitchen and i love it and i smile at that every day um sound is also critical so being able to have a quiet bedroom where you can sleep soundly, you know, that also comes down to sight, having good blackout curtains, and that is what is going to help you sleep at night. Like taking all of these things into consideration um, when you're designing are, are critical in actually making you feel calm and at peace and at ease in your, in your home. These are all, these are actually all personal images to me. The middle one is also um, 
my kitchen, the wall sconces um, my husband and I found um, in Italy on honeymoon. Um, it took wow. 15 years to get them hung on the wall, but still they're now hung on the wall. Um, and so things like that that are, are that are touchstones to, yeah. to our clients, you know, we yeah. want to incorporate their personal pieces in, into their home. And then it really, really feels, feels like their own. Uh, you know what, that's super beautiful and whimsical, but it's also very sophisticated. I love that, the juxtaposition that you've accomplished. In right. That. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, I love, yeah, I love that wallpaper. Makes me smile every day. Yeah. Um, we also, we're known for our oversized and gorgeous pendant lighting. Um, I am a big fan of dimmers. I think all light should just be on dimmers. Um, I totally agree. <laughs> if you have dimmers, then you will, you will lose, you will use your overhead lighting. Um, so all of these images feature, um, oversized pendants and these create they're they're almost sculptural in the room so it's, it's it's almost like you have a piece of art in addition to having lighting um we like to layer um i think pot lights i would say sort of 10 years ago it was pot lights were everywhere and they were abundant um and i'm feeling now we're being far more um far more restrained in the quantity of pot lights we, we put in a home. Um, they're really just used for, for task lighting and, um, and then we layer those with pendant lights, wall sconces, floor lamps, table lamps. Um, so you have multiple, multiple levels in a home. Um, one thing I did want to talk about with, with lighting because it I know for me, it's, it's, a real, <laughs> it's a real thing for me. Um, there is nothing worse than, and we've all, and we've all been there where you, you're maybe at a, at a restaurant or, and you go in and you're feeling great and you go into the powder room and you turn the light on and you're like, oh my God, I look horrific today. Is that and what I really look like? Yeah. Because, because somebody has, has got like, you know, light bulbs that are designed for doing surgery under you know, in their, in their powder room. And it's, it's the quality of light you want, you, you want to look good in your, in your spaces. And that doesn't mean sort of living in the dark and tripping, <laughs> tripping over things. Um, although I think my husband thinks that's how, that's how I, I'd like to live. But um, it means just being, being clever with the choices you make. We try to not have, um, you know, lighting has moved from incandescent to halogen to now LED lighting. Um, you will see daylight bulbs everywhere you go. Just do not buy them. They are very, very blue, very, very harsh. And they almost look like fluorescent lights. And a daylight bulb will have about, some, they're rated at about 5,000 um, Kelvins. We like to have bulbs in our client's home that are roughly between sort of 2,700 to 3,000 Kelvins. And those are readily available, Home Depot, Canadian Tire. Um, they're nothing fancy, but it's just, it's getting that, that color that is, that is important. Because when you've invested all this time and, and energy and money in, per, in picking the perfect paint color with the fabric, with everything else, to then destroy that by putting on a blue light, it just takes away everything. So the quality of, of your lighting is, is also is, is very, very critical. Um, fourthly, I see we like a lot of texture and tension for longevity. And this um, will really help your home avoid being dated. Um, we, I talk about tension quite a lot with my clients and we, we deliberately have things in a space that do not perfectly match. And that can be hard to sometimes understand that we're deliberately picking something with designers, we're known for our taste, but we're picking things that don't perfectly, that don't perfectly match. If everything in a space perfectly matches, it can look 
really bland. And it will also, it will all date at exactly the same time. Mm. Whereas if you have things that are a little bit mismatched, it adds character and it, you do not have a time stamp on it. So the image on the far right, um, this is in my um, client's sun bedroom. This is just a corner of it. But you can see here, we have a chair that has beautiful exposed jute backing. It, there's a wicker stool. Um, the fabric that the chair is actually upholstered in is a blue sort of nubbly canvas. And then there's a printed linen pillow. Um, just in that one corner there, you have so much goodness and texture and loveliness. Um, the bedroom is one of my favorite spaces. It's, it's also the house that we spoke about, the kitchen and the den earlier. Um, this room is, is fairly monochromatic. All the big things really are, they're either ivory or they're, or they're black. Um, and then we added small touches of pink, but you'll see here, there's probably about five shades of pink and they're not, they don't all go together, but they go together. Yeah. So it looks like even if something is, we always say, even if something is, and we never, we never shop for a whole house in one afternoon, but when we're sourcing for something for a client all at the same time, I never want it to look like we've, we've done that. I want it to look like things have been acquired and collected over time. And the only way to do that is to have this blend of texture and tension. Um, the tree belongs to the bedroom house. And I get that was just our, our sampling for the pieces we were going to put in. And then the image on the left is um, belongs to the image on the right, which is my client's son bedroom. And here we, we gave him a very low it's like fabric on the bottom. It's a low upholstered wall. Um, and then we, we added grass cloth to that above that. And again, it's just such a gorgeous mix of That's texture beautiful. and color. And, yeah, and it's very restful. And again, it's not age specific which I think is so clever. You don't necessarily know whose room that is in a very nice way. Yes. No. He, yeah, no. Um, he's a teenager um, and there's a gorgeous library shelf in his room yeah. that has a lot of his personal stuff and things. And, and you would be able to guess from that how old he is, but then the pieces that are on there are always going to be pieces that are in transition, are always right. going to be getting changed up. Um, so when that. kids move out, uh, yeah. that could really be an office, right? Like there's uh -huh. nothing uh -huh. yes. major or... No, because he has a gorgeous desk in there as well. It'd make a beautiful guest room as well. Um, I don't think he's ever leaving. Like if right. I had a bedroom, I would never leave. Um, so yeah. That's the trouble with making the space too nice, I suppose. You invite people <laughs> to stay longer. <laughs> I know. And then finally, um, just to end up, I, I always say to you to use... Use color cleverly, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, and really think outside the box. And so yeah. in the first image, um, we have soft ivory walls, but again, you'll see the ceiling color is darker than the wall color. And this just looks, it looks so sophisticated yes. in the life. It is just absolutely stunning. Amazing. And it almost, it just sort of echoes back to the piece of pottery that's on the pedestal and the yeah. side table. It's just, it's very warm and inviting. Yeah. Um, the next one is an entrance for you. And I, I love when we have, if you have that separated space from your main hallway to actually do that, no matter the size, but to just pick a saturated color and almost so you, you walk into the space and you're enveloped in this, in this gorgeous cocooning color. Um, and then you move into right. the light and then it can be brighter and lighter. And this color, as you can see, is then picked up um, on, this, on the sectional, which, which you can see from um, the front door. And then the, the floor tiles, the beautiful marble tiles also have a, a, this sort of plummy vein running through them. 
So it's a bit of a different experience, but a complimentary one that you know you're in the same house, but you yes. it has its own moment and its own identity. It has its own moment, yes. But what's important is that you have, I think we've, we've all been in homes where you're almost like, you're standing on the threshold of a room and you don't know if you have permission to cross it, to go into. Um, and with this room, with this house, we have this thread of color that embraces you in the front foyer and then it trickles through the rest of the house and so your eye just naturally is, is pulled throughout yeah. the space um, and it's it's not it's not that obvious when you're in the space but it just it feels very inviting um, and lovely um, yeah. Like a subconscious yes ah yeah invitation to the next yes. room exactly yeah it's this it's just like an open an open invitation love um, that and it's just your your eye it just sort of trick tricks your mind that it can be something as simple as having a piece of art with the same color or a pillow or something but it just tricks your eye into moving through um the next space is actually a powder room in my studio um wow. now this is a large space for a powder room. Um, it is nine foot by nine foot. Um, wow, that's a bedroom. It's a bedroom. <laughs> well, I'm in a I'm in a commercial building. Yes, and I'm on the ground floor, so our powder room has to be accessible, so right. it has to be able to accommodate a wheelchair, and so, and there's no natural daylight in this room, so I kind of broke every rule that there rule that there may be. In that we went with black millwork, um, but it doesn't make the space feel any darker. There is there is no natural daylight in here. So what we did was we just had fun, and I also I wanted to use this. This space was that was featured um, in the Globe and Mail. They did a they did an article um, last year about um, the importance of having. Um, beautiful spaces that are also accessible and they're just not seen they're so they always feel so clinical and so I really wanted to take the challenge of having this space and you go into the space and apart from this apart from having this size of room you would not know that it is barrier free but it is perfectly suitable for someone in a wheelchair all the fixtures um are, are suitable and it, it just shows you what can be done um, with some thought and some and some consideration um, and we just we went to town in here with sure did with, I love with it paper, with the peenies with this, this little pharaoh ball has this amazing wallpaper with bumblebees so that's what's running across the ceiling um, is that we, marble is that green marble yes it's green wow. marble which is phenomenal and then the ottoman was another thing from sao paulo that came with the swings <laughs> so that, that's really castles on the bottom yes uh -huh. yeah it's, it. it's beautiful i know love it sometimes it's in there sometimes it's it's in it's in the main studio it, it just gets moved around because i like to, i like to have it yeah. having movable pieces that aren't necessarily yeah. bound to one room no because they would look great in a foyer, it's great, it's like oh, yeah. additional seating in a living room, it's super. Um, and then finally, um, we have a snapshot of the kitchen that's in my studio. Wow. And again, like I just, I wanted to be able to show our clients the power of colour. And so this is painted in a beautiful green um, from Flower and Ball. And it is topped with a gorgeous Brunswick and Free um, wallpaper. And oh, sorry, no, it's a GP, GP and J Baker wallpaper. Um, but this has really, it has really helped um, my clients be able to see and not, not to be afraid yes. of embracing color, even if it's in a kitchen, and that there is more than just white or, or yeah. off white. Um, and so this has really opened up a lot of people's eyes into being able to embrace and have color. And like we have different hardware on the cabinets down there. I've got two different styles of hardware. Um, and then the floating shelf at the top, that just rotates with 
favorite things and I get switched out pretty quickly. Um, I think it's so easy to be afraid of color, but to see it in these spaces, you know, yeah. it's not overpowering, it's balanced. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for a client to be able to come in here and see that it's not scary, it can yeah. look timeless and elegant, even with a strong color. It's amazing. Oh. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe in a few years time, I might, although I, I doubt it because I adore that wallpaper, but if I wanted to change things up a bit, I would, I could possibly change out the wallpaper, but I don't think I would. Another yeah. thing we do a lot is, and I, again, using color cleverly, is I, I rarely to never use stainless steel sinks in kitchens. Um, mm -hmm. I like to use cast iron, so you can see the one in the studio. It's also oh, the same okay. color, the one I have in my home. It's called Thunder, and it is the most gorgeous um, sort of chocolatey grade mm. color. Um, and I love it because, Stainless steel sinks just, they just get scratched. Yes. <laughs> as, soon as, you, as soon as something goes in, it is scratched. Um, and also using the colored sink, it does allow you to then pick any kind of faucet. Whereas I feel Good point. clients are more restricted if you use a stainless steel sink, then it tends to be a stainless steel faucet and then you know, sometimes, okay, we can use different color hardware, but if you have a color site, like I've had clients, we've done like sky blue sinks, we've done red sinks, um, like they're just so joyful. Yes. And they're really easy to maintain, really easy to live with. That's, an, that's another thing that I am, I am big on. And again, there's nothing, your home is not going to feel like an oasis if terrified every time somebody touched something right so we also want to make sure things are incredibly durable and um, practical good point yeah. so that is me so if anybody has any questions i would i would yes, if anyone has any questions please feel free to put them in the message box at the bottom alternatively i see jillian's um contact info is here on the screen um, you can reach out to her, you can reach out to us. But Jillian, thank you so much. This has been thank so you, fun Megan. to have you. We really appreciate it. And I'm <laughs> sure our guests appreciate, appreciate all the info too. So many good take-homes from that. Yes, I hope so. All right. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank thanks so for much. Our, our guests for joining yes, us. thank you. Thank have you a great so weekend, much. everyone. Okay, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.